If you went to medical school or nursing school, you've probably heard of the terms Charcot's disease or Charcot's triad or Charcot's foot, Charcot lead in crystals, Charcot marry tooth disease or anything which has Charcot in front or in the middle or at the back. But notice that how all these diseases are from different disciplines. But what is Charcot or rather who is Charcot? Hi, my name is Avitej Sidhu and today we'll be talking about Dr. Jean-Marie Charcot and his very, very famous friends. The 19th century was an exciting time for modern medicine as there were new pathologies waiting to be discovered. This is Dr. Jean Martin Charcot, the father of modern neurology and famous for at least discovering 15 new pathologies. Dr. Charcot was a student of Duchenne de Boulogne. Um, not him, him. He was the original father of neurology and discovered Duchenne's muscular dystrophy, a genetic disorder characterized by progressive muscular degeneration and weakness. He was also the one to describe human facial expressions for the first time and believed that they were linked to the soul of the person. Duchenne himself was trained by Dr. Dupuytren, whom we know because of Dupuytren's contracture, which is an abnormal thickening of connective tissue causing one or more fingers to become permanently bent. Interestingly, he was also responsible to treat Napoleon's hemorrhoids. Which I presume one could get after sitting on a horse for a long time. Uh, moving on. Duchenne was a big influencer of his time and his work on human facial expressions was used by his friend Charles Darwin in his book The Expressions of the Emotions in Man and Animal. Darwin himself had other famous doctor friends, one of whom was Dr. James Paget, father of modern pathology and known for Paget's disease, a condition which involves cellular remodeling and deformity of one or more bones. Okay, let's not digress. So Duchenne was Charcot's teacher and let's come back to Charcot. Charcot was working at the Salpetriere Hospital and was one of the leading neurologists of his time. He had mastered in English, French, Italian and German and read medical literature in all of them, giving him a very well-rounded knowledge of medicine. He had read the works of James Parkinson, including his essay on the shaking palsy and suggested that it should be named after James Parkinson himself, Parkinson's disease, as we all know it now. In the 1850s, Paris was one of the largest cities in Europe and with increased construction under Napoleon III, it attracted a lot of immigrant population of construction workers and beggars alike. The Salpetrier Hospital, now one of the largest hospitals in France, was a former gun factory and in the 17th century was converted into a hospice for the poor women of Paris. Over time, it served as a prison for prostitutes and a holding place for women who had learning disabilities, were mentally ill or epileptic. At the time when Charcot joined the Salpetrier Hospital, it had almost 5,000 patients, providing him with a wide range of pathologies. Charcot loved art and photography, and the Salpetrier Hospital provided him a platform to combine his love for science and art. At the height of his career, he was working on hysteria, which is an umbrella term for all the mental disorders. He hired a full-time photographer at the Salpetrier to document all his hysteria patients. Charcot would bring interesting patients, mostly women, from the Salpetrier Hospital for dramatic theatrical demonstrations. His tickets used to sell months in advance and his audience were not only the scientific elite of the world, but also the general population of Paris. His theatrical performances and audience are probably best demonstrated by the most interesting piece of medical artwork, a clinical lesson at the Salpetrier. Sitting in the auditorium and listening to their teacher very carefully are his students and some notable names in medical history. Standing next to Charcot holding the hysterical patient is Joseph Babinski, who gave us the Babinski sign, Gilles de la Tourette, who gave us the Tourette syndrome, a nervous system disorder involving repetitive movements or unwanted sounds. 
Pierre Marie, who found the Charcot Marie Tooth Disease, a degenerative nerve disorder mostly seen in arms and legs. He also discovered acromegaly, which is a growth hormone disorder in which people develop large feet and hands. And this is Charcot's own son, Jean-Baptiste Charcot, a doctor, two-time Olympic winner in sailing, a polar explorer, and son-in-law to Victor Hugo, the author of Les Miserables and Hunchback of Notre Dame. Some of his students not in the painting include Charles Joseph Bouchard, known for Charcot Bouchard aneurysms and Bouchard nodes, Pierre Genet, a pioneering psychologist and a colleague of Carl Jung. But probably Charcot's most famous student was a young Jewish neurologist from Vienna. His name was Sigmund Freud. Freud came to Paris on a three-month fellowship to study the art of hypnosis from Charcot at the Salpetria Hospital. Charcot strongly proposed that hysteria was an inherited nerve disease which could be set off by a traumatic event. He also believed that certain groups such as the poor, Jewish and homeless were more susceptible to develop hysteria. While Freud believed in the use of hypnosis for hysteria, he rejected Charcot's idea that hysteria was a hereditary or a neurological phenomena and thought that Charcot's view were anti-Semitic which caused a lot of tension between the two. His fellowship with Charcot inspired him to pursue psychiatry and psychoanalysis, making him arguably the most famous psychiatrist of all time. Charcot died in 1893. But what happened to his students after that? And what happened to the whole theory of hysteria? For his staunch believers, like Joseph Babinski, following the death of Charcot, the claims that hysteria was a neurological phenomena were refuted, leaving Babinski without an academic support or employment. He went on to later create the Babinski sign, but unfortunately died of Parkinson's disease. Gilles de la Tourette, the guy who gave Tourette syndrome, following the death of his teacher, got severely depressed and was diagnosed with neurosyphilis. He later died alone in an asylum of psychosis. Albert Binet, one of Charcot's unpaid interns during his time at the Salpetria, never bought into the idea of hysteria shows. After quitting his job with Charcot, he created the Binet-Simon scale test, or our modern IQ test. Charcot's legacy of hysteria was disproved after his death, and while psychiatry took decades to recover, Sigmund Freud and Pierre Genet wrote about the importance of his clinical demonstration and his works and thus Shako was to be remembered for decades to come. If you like my work and you like this video, share it with someone who might find it as interesting as you did. And as always, thanks for watching.